It depends, it depends, it depends. Let's get started. But first, leave below in the comments how many times I'm going to say it depends in this video. Anybody who gets it right gets a cookie. Would I legally be able to use a piranha launcher as self-defense if I'm being robbed? So you never clarified if you were in an objective and subjective threat of imminent grievous bodily harm. Let's assume you are. The next question is, is a piranha launcher deadly force? And I'm going to go ahead and say no, it's not because the piranha is out of the water. I mean, what's it going to do? Shoot at you and then fall to the ground? And while we're on the subject, it might be illegal to own piranhas. So it's going to depend, Vector. I wish I had a jumpsuit like that. If I intend to murder someone, then take them somewhere secluded only for them to die of natural causes while we're there, am I on the hook? Let's say I take an elderly man to a cabin in the woods. I intend to murder him and I have all the equipment laid out recently only to find that he dies before I can use any of it. Am I on the hook for attempt or intent to murder? Asking for a friend. So. With respect to attempted murder, it's going to depend on if you took a significant step in the furtherance of this particular crime. So the question becomes, is taking the old man to the woods to potentially murder him that significant step? So even though you didn't murder him, you could still potentially be charged with attempted murder if that is the significant step. And also, while I'm thinking about it, it very well could be murder if you come to the conclusion that taking the old man to the woods was the significant step in attempting the murder. Well, then you could be found guilty of murder because he was in the woods and maybe he didn't have access to a hospital that he otherwise would have had. That's a little bit of a stretch, but I definitely think attempted murder is in the ballpark. But then you still have to get caught. That's actually a good question. It depends. Hypothetical legal question. If a bug spray company claims their products will be effective against bugs, but is also safe against children and pets, are there grounds to sue if your pet grasshopper died from exposure to the bug repellent? Are there limits? What can be classified as a pet? I think you're getting too far ahead of yourself. First of all, you probably would not win because I think a reasonable person under the same or similar circumstance would probably classify a grasshopper as a bug, even if it is your pet. It's just a pet bug. And you are the one who sprayed it because common sense, if you spray a thing that is going to kill bugs, well, the bugs are probably going to die. The next issue is even if you could potentially sue, I don't think there's enough money involved to justify said lawsuit. Hiring a lawyer is expensive. And under the law, pets are treated as property and you cannot get compensation for loss of a pet, for loss of enjoyment of life, for loss of companionship. That is not a remedy available under the law. So it would literally be just the finite amount of what the grasshopper is worth. And I'm pretty sure grasshoppers are worth like zero dollars, like maybe a penny. Trolley problem. What would the legality be of the trolley problem? Would I go to jail for flipping the lever and saving three people or should I just not intervene? This is a great question. So let's work through this. A trolley's coming, there's two sets of tracks. No matter what you do, at least one person is going to die. It wouldn't be murder because you didn't intend. Actually, it might be murder. Shit. This is really, really hard. I was first gonna say it wouldn't be murder because you didn't intend for the trolley to run over anybody. But if you walked up to the trolley and flipped the lever, you basically put the trolley in the way of the other people. And obviously you didn't intend for them to die, but by flipping the switch, it is reasonable that the trolley is going to run over and kill someone. So you can make an inference just based on that. So it might not be first degree murder, but maybe second degree or manslaughter. Again, it's, it's gonna depend on the jurisdiction. The reality is this problem is an independent. Remember, just because you commit a crime doesn't 
mean that you're going to be charged of the crime. And on top of all of that, just because you get charged of a crime and you did the crime doesn't mean you're going to be convicted of the crime. It depends. Just because you did it doesn't mean you're guilty. This is absolutely right. If you're in a lose-lose situation and you act as a hero, let's just say the trolley has 100 people on one track and one person on the other, and you flip the switch to save the 100 people, thereby killing the one person, well, is a district attorney going to indict you? Are they going to charge you if you legitimately had nothing to do with this other than just being in the wrong place at the wrong time or the right place at the wrong time? Depends on how you look at it. Tough questions, good question. We need more questions like this in the subreddit and less feet pics. Disgusting! Attorney Tom family, Attorney Tom main's channel, Attorney Tom's TikTok, poor TikTok. Attorney Dom's gaming channel. Y'all, I make no excuses for the TikTok. TikTok to TikTok, over it. I'm a YouTuber now. New, improved, way better. My gaming channel. I've just been so freaking busy. No time to play games. I don't play games. No, I, I actually love games. I wanna play games. I'm gonna start playing games soon. Please just bear with me. I film these videos at night. I don't even edit these videos for the most part, except on the weekends. So, been very, very busy. I haven't forgotten about the squad. I'm dying. Help me. Smoking in a fireworks store. If I owned a clearly marked fireworks store, but I did not have a smoking sign, and somebody walks into the cigarette and causes the fireworks to blow up the store, do you believe that I, the owner, would be civilly or criminally responsible for any harm that came to the smoker as a result of the explosion? So, this is a question of contributory negligence. Essentially, if the cigarette smoker sued you on a civil level, they would be asserting negligence that you didn't properly maintain the facilities. They would say that having somebody who smokes is foreseeable. There are thousands and thousands of people who smoke. You need to have an environment where one smoker doesn't blow up your entire shop. Now, what you are going to say to counter that, the affirmative defense is, yeah, but you as a smoker, a reasonable human being, shouldn't be smoking in a fireworks store to begin with. So the fault is on you. And the answer of the ultimate outcome is going to depend. It's gonna depend who's on the jury. It's gonna depend on the judge. It's gonna depend on the lawyers you hire to advocate for you. So. It depends. Boxing match with the lock picking lawyer. When? Tomorrow. Pay-per-view. $500 of pay-per-view. The lock picking lawyer is actually a total badass. I just want to meet the lock picking lawyer. This is what happens when you submit another proportional use of force question. You have been warned. You have been warned. But seriously, that's like, 60% of all questions in the subreddit. Can you have a casual conversation while detained question without being it used against you? Potentially you can, but why would you? Only bad things can happen. The only thing that can happen from that is the police decide to not use that conversation. So it's not gonna do anything good for you. It's only can go bad, it can only go bad. Do not do that. I agree with Carol Musician. Do not voluntarily speak to the police, period. Can you force a part owner to step back from operations? It is going to depend, potentially, yes. It's gonna depend on your operating agreement. This is why things like this are very, very important to get a lawyer before you form a business to address these kind of scenarios. That's what lawyers are here for. They're trained to look for potential issues down the road and address them so when they come up, you don't have to litigate it out and spend 500 times the money litigation than had you just hired a lawyer in the first place. So potentially, yes, it's going to depend. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. Hit that like button. Do it, do it, do it. Don't, don't leave a comment down below that says it depends. Hit the like button. Consider subscribing to this channel. I think we just passed 322,000 subscribers. Awesome. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.